What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about the geography and culture of Norway. You know, the more I've looked at things in Norway and experienced things about Norway through the miracle of the internet, I've realized I do not have a firm enough understanding of how Norway is laid out, the geography of Norway, where everything is. There's regions of Norway that I've never heard about, all sorts of cities, and I just want a better understanding of how Norway is organized and how the geography is laid out. So I found this video, which seems like it'll be extremely helpful for that. This video I found is like 20 minutes long, so I'm just gonna cut this into two parts, uh, one and two. And for the first part, from what I can see, they're gonna talk a lot about uh, the geography of Norway and uh, where everything is. And then in the second half of this video, part two, it's more about the culture of Norway, which I thought, that's fantastic. That sounds really interesting. It's a little different than what I imagined, but I'll just make that part two. And for now, the first part, I'll just learn about whatever they talk about as far as geography. So if that makes any sense at all, uh, <laughs> then perfect. Let's take a look. Let's learn something. Hey everyone, so I'm excited for this one. We recently did a geography in Oslo, Norway, and I had the honor to meet many of you guys, the Norwegian geography peeps, in your own country. It was amazing. Norway is a country everyone has kind of heard about, something about snow, ice, Vikings, skiing, I think trolls, <laughs> yeah. but Norway is also a yes. land of highly compounded history, tradition, postmodernism, and above all, landscape and people. Yeah. And black metal. Yes, Keith is really excited for this episode. <laughs> it's time. Black metal? Is that a kind of music? Iceland, and now the fourth Nordic sister, Norway. Now, in the Nordic countries, Norway would kind of be like the one that everyone either tries to call their best friend or date. She smiles at the ground, pulls her hair behind her ear, and looks up with those sky blue doe eyes that sparkle and says, Welcome to Norway! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know this video was gonna be funny and comparing Norway to like a beautiful woman or something. Norway plays a huge role in what it means to be Northern European. And when you look at it on the map, you'll see that it's fascinating how well they've developed the civil infrastructure from a rugged half-frozen peninsula. Oh, and <laughs> there's a town called Hell. First of all, the country, which kind of looks like the shape of a spoon, is located in Northern Europe in the region known as Scandinavia, just above yeah. the North Sea, bordering mostly Sweden to the east, Finland in the far north, and even a small sliver of Russia at the very end. This effect... Okay, this is really good for me. This this is actually exactly what I needed. I need a more clear understanding of exactly where Norway is positioned in relationship to its neighboring countries. Even though I had a rough idea, this is good to remind me. Effectively means that Norway goes even further east than Finland and gets the entire Arctic coast from their neighbors, sharing the Barents Sea with Russia. Apart from mm. that, Norway has some overseas territories as well, two of which are in the Arctic Circle, the Svalbard Archipelago with only about 3,000 people, mostly in the largest town, Longyearbyen, and the uninhabited Jan Mayen Island. Oh, see, I didn't know about this. This is interesting. Norway... The territory of Norway extends so far to the northwest oh, into the sea that it uh, technically owns these two islands and one has 3,000 people on it? That's very interesting. Very, I'm going to have to learn more about those. Which was actually kind of traded with the UK for these islands in Canada in like 1930 when Canada was still British. Weird trade-off, but okay. After that, huh. they have two dependent territories, the Antarctic areas of Peter the First Island and Bouvet Island, way down south. Wait, wait, hold on, what? The Antarctic Canada was still British. Weird trade-off, but okay. After that, they have two dependent territories, the Antarctic areas of Peter the First Island and Bouvet Island, way down south, neither of which are permanent inhabited and they also claim a portion of Antarctica known as Queen Maudland. <laughs> what? What? This is... That's weird. That's interesting, but it's weird. Norway owns part of Antarctica? And some of the islands by Antarctica? Why? What? When? How? Huh? I mean, that's cool. <laughs> what? And going back to the mainland, though, the country is currently, as of 2019, divided into 17 counties, or Fulker, plus the unincorporated area of Svalbard, which, by the way, holds the northernmost permanently inhabited settlement in the world. With a I'm pretty sure this changed. When was this made? This was made in 2019. 
Because when I search Norway uh, regions, the little Wikipedia, Norway is commonly divided into five major regions. Um, in 2017, the government decided to abolish the counties of Norway and replace them with regions. Is that still in effect? Because that's that was my understanding. These five regions, East, Eastern Norway, Fjord Norway, Northern Norway, Southern Norway, and Trondelag? Okay, well, one of these. Anyway, I'll hear about the regions anyway. The population around 40 in the winter and 120 in the summer. The thing is, in 2020, the country will merge some of these counties into 11 regions. Already, North and South Trondelag have merged, and the final result in 2020 will look like this. The country's largest... 11 regions. And now maybe it's five? Maybe? City and capital is Oslo, located in the southeast, which also holds the largest airport, Oslo Lufthavn International. As yes, Oslo is the one thing <laughs> Americans might know about Norway. Like an average American may have heard of Oslo. And that's about it, as far as knowledge on Norway and stuff in Norway. Except maybe skiing. As well as Oslo's shipping port, the busiest shipping port in the country. A skip to the west, you find the second largest city, Bergen, with of course the second largest airport, Bergen International. It is said that almost around 80% of the country lives within 10 kilometers of the ocean, and despite the rugged mountainous terrain, the nation has an extensive network of roads, bridges, and trains that cross virtually every region of the nation, including the Laerdal Tunnel, the world's longest road tunnel that stretches 24 kilometers long, cutting through a wow. mountain, and also the famous Atlantic Road that hops from island to island in the Mur of Romstal County. No. Yeah, that's amazing. I haven't heard of the Atlantic Road. I think I may have heard of this tunnel. But the info the infrastructure of transportation and roads built throughout all of Norway is incredible. And also the fact that 80% of the people in Norway live really close to the ocean. I never thought about that and how that must impact oh this is the culture of Norway. Somehow, I know fish is an important economical, like, export for Norway, but just living by water gives you kind of, like, a cultural identity in that sense. I would think, when 80% of the population does. But, yeah, then he was already talking about these roads, and that is amazing. That is truly good design. Now, what's really fascinating is that Norway kind of went from this to this. And for a nation that has never surpassed five and a half million in population, it's pretty impressive. How did yeah. this happen, though? Well, as the legend goes, in the 60s, Denmark was like, Hey, Norway, you are just the best. I love you, man. And you know, just to prove it, I'm going to give you all this ocean water stuff. Wow, really? <laughs> yeah, 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 just take it. Thanks. Whoa, there's like a ton of oil here. Thanks, Denmark. <laughs> Actually, it was the Geneva Con... <laughs> that was a good little uh, performance. Did that really happen? Denmark gave Norway a lot of territory in the oceans, even though that looks like it should belong to Norway because it's literally wrapped around Norway. But, uh, and then that's Norway, as I know, has tons of oil, which has really helped its economy. And it's, uh, it's based on owning all that w territory in the sea. So that's... That is an interesting turn of events. Convention like 10 years prior to that, but that story's kind of boring. Now, as you can clear- Oh, the Geneva Convention helped as well? Denmark? Actually, it was the Geneva Convention like 10 years prior to that, but that story's kind of boring. Now, okay. as you can clearly tell, Norway has lots of access to the ocean. Due to all the serrated inlets and fjords, plus islands, they have the seventh largest coastline in the world. This also means that roads and bridges can only take you so far, and in order to get around the Norway's west coast, you'll see a lot, and I mean a lot, of ferries and ships. And with- Yeah! In, like, a ton of videos I've watched on Norway, a lot of them mention fairies, or something called a- something like a fairy, or a cruise, or a cruise fairy, or something like that. Yeah, but it makes sense, though. A lot of water. What's cool is that, like some other neighbors, Norway has a free roaming law in which you can pretty much camp out anywhere in nature as long as it is not on private property. We right. all know some towns in Norway are situated in the most picturesque locations. Some, like this town, have no direct sunlight for six months because of the mountains, so they built giant mirrors to illuminate them. Fun fact. What? I mean, that was a fun fact. Some places in Norway don't get any sunlight because of mountains? 
That is very interesting. Longyearbyen is known for being both the brightest and darkest place on Earth. Because of its location on the Arctic Circle, it gets 110 continuous days of no sunshine and 95 days of no night. Also what? What? I mean, it is far north, but what? I would never have even thought about somewhere like this existing. I had just learned the other day, Nor places in Norway can get like four hours of sun, and then that changes throughout the year, but on this island, you get 95 days of non-stop sun? And 110 days of non-stop night? That almost sounds like another planet or something. Also, they have an emergency seed bank with over a million specimens built into the side of a mountain in case of yeah. the apocalypse and all plant life dies out on Earth. Also, technically, it's illegal to die in Svalbard. Because of the permafrost, bodies do not decompose, so you must either ship out your body or cremate it. Not sure how to segue okay. out of that, but let's talk about cool places. Now, I asked some of you guys in Norwegian geography what some of the top places to visit in Norway are, and here are some of the suggestions you gave. Nordkap, okay. the Viking Ship Museum, Nidaros Cathedral, the Dock of Bergen, the King's Castle, Alta's Igloo Hotel. Whoa! You know, some of these I actually have uh, reacted to and heard about, which is cool. But I have never seen this Igloo Hotel or a couple of the other things. These are going by really quick, so. Frogner Park and Vigeland Sculpture Park. Try to find the one with the dude fighting the babies. This <laughs> fortress, this Iron Age farm, the world's largest... Oh! Oh! Okay. Moose sculpture, this whaling museum, the Roald Amundsen and Edward Munch monuments and grave, the Kontiki Museum, the Polaria Aquarium, the Eger Viking style brewery, the Three Swords Monument. Wow. Whoa. These are actually a ton of like good ideas for other stuff I can take a closer look at. This is all like fascinating. So many traditional stave churches, but this one is probably the most famous one. I mean, there's like a billion rocks named after body parts of trolls. There's that weird boulder jammed between two. What? Huh, have I seen this? This almost looks like something I've seen before I even started learning more about Norway. Just in popular culture. This boulder between two cliffs. Maybe I have seen this. Maybe this is famous enough that I saw it. Cliffs, a mountain with a hole in it, so it... Whoa! Whoa. That is cool. With the sun shining through as well. Looks like it got shot by a gun. So many ice caves. The world's strongest whirlpool. So many fjords like Geiranger Fjord, North Fjord, Hardanger Fjord, Troll Fjord, Harrison Fjord. They were even supposed to give Finland the peak of Mount Halti for their 100... Man, I always say Norway has like the most beautiful places ever, but now it just sounds like it has a bunch of interesting beautiful places that I didn't know about. Huh. 100th birthday, but then it was kind of like, Happy 100th birthday, Finland! Thanks, Norway. So I heard that you're thinking of finally giving me the peak to my tallest mountain, right? Oh, oh yeah, sure, why not? Awesome. Well, then uh, let me have it. Oh, see, there's this thing in my constitution called Article 1, which states that the kingdom of Norway is indivisible. So, here's a taco. Yeah, Norwegians <laughs> actually really love tacos, which makes the perfect opportunity to transition into... Now, if you know anything about Norway's okay. land, you'll know this one word. Fjords. 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 The word is even Norwegian. And it's interesting how it became that way. Basically, like... Yeah. Like, Americans barely even understand the word fjord. I mean, I don't think I did understand what a fjord was for a long time. Just because there are no fjords in the United States. We don't talk about it. We don't use that word, ever. So it is really, to us, a very Norwegian concept. Like many other areas in the north, the country is a post-glacial peninsula with over 50,000 islands that at one point was completely covered in ice. Over time, the ice melted, eroding the rock beneath, creating the incredibly indented coastline of steep, jagged cliffs and fjords. Of huh. the coast, the largest and deepest fjord is Sunja Fjord, and it is the third largest in the world, extending over 200 kilometers inland. This oh my gosh. So that's how they were created. Uh, through the thawing of frozen land. Wow, that's really interesting. 2,000 kilometers, or 200 kilometers, still amazing. A giant fjord. Look how far from the sea it goes in. That is amazing. 
This means that much of the country is divided into regions of choppy fjord stuff to the west and the connected hilly and valley stuff to the south and southeast. Okay. Everything pretty much falls either within the alpine boreal climate or further up north, arctic. Keep in mind that due to Svalbard and Jan Mayen, the Norwegian economic zone extends to the majority of the Norwegian Sea and much of the Barents, as well as the North Sea to the south. This is Wow, so Norway, Norway owns all of this territory. That's a... Uh... Pretty amazing. It's called the NCS or Norwegian Continental Shelf. Wow, look at that. I mean, it's bigger than the land by a lot. Here, the largest deposit of underwater oil is found that supplies Norway with much of its wealth. A skip to the east, you find the largest lake, Lake Musa, which is just parallel to the longest river in the country, the Glama, which drains all the way into the North Sea in the south and has a drainage basin that covers about 13% of the country's land. A little skip to the west oh. in the center, you find the longest and most dominant mountain chain, the Scandinavian Mountains, where you can... Oh, Scandinavian mountains. I didn't even know about this mountain range. We find the tallest peak, Galdhupigen, which is also the tallest in all of the Nordics. If we are mm. discussing the overseas territories, then Svalbard is pretty much an Arctic archipelago of glaciers, this one being the largest in all of Europe, and the rest are mostly just cold valleys. Jan Mayen Island is the only place with an active volcano in Norway. The Berenberg Peak last erupted in 1980. Otherwise, if we skip mm. all the way south to the Antarctic, Bouvet <laughs> and Peter I Islands are dormant volcanic islands. Bouvet considered the most remote island in the world. World, and both of oh. which are nearly completely covered in ice and only inhabited by seals and birds. Now, right. keep in mind about the oil thing, though. Although they export lots of it, gas is actually still super expensive. According to GlobalPetrolPrices.com, as of 2019, it is just over 17.2 krone per liter, making it one of the most expensive places to get gas in the world. Oh, jeez, I bet. <laughs> this is in 2019. In 2022, here in the future. Oh, I can only imagine how expensive it's gotten now. I don't want to talk about it. This is partially because in 1990, they initiated the Government Pension Fund Global. This is a national wealth fund run by the government to subsidize pensions when oil dependence runs dry. Now, Norway has... Yeah, I have heard about at least a sother sovereign wealth fund in Norway where they're investing a lot of the money and wealth from Norwegian oil to, and it's worth well over a trillion dollars now, basically planning for the future. It's very good, very smart. Lots of natural resources and clever ways of managing them, making them somewhat of a paragon for development few other nations can compare with. Challenge accepted. But for what it's <laughs> worth, they have a unique system locked and loaded. And now it is time for my triple shot of espresso break. Usually this is the part where Noah comes in, but Noah is out of town. So let's give this to Keith. <laughs> <laughs> now, everyone knows that Norway is quite a prosperous nation, but just how prosperous is it? Let's just put it this way. They export more than they import and not just petroleum products. Fish alone makes up about 10% mm. of their exports and they are the highest exporter of salmon out of any other country in the world. I okay. just love Voss water. It's expensive and it's Norwegian. So, you know, it probably came from like a mystical glacier or something. Oh, I actually haven't heard of Voss water before <laughs> is that special norwegian water or something i'd like to i'd like to sample that actually yeah no that's basically just our tap water i wash my dishes with that stuff every day but it's expensive and Norwegian. And you fell for it. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all just got tricked. Otherwise, the majority of the energy in Norway comes from hydroelectric power. Norway became one of the first countries to adopt a carbon tax back in 1991. Although yeah. cutting down trees is still done on a smaller scale, they were the first country to ban deforestation. They have Europe's- Yeah, Norway is well known in the United States for their uh, fighting climate, uh, Things that are bad for the climate, I should say. <laughs> Not fighting climate, but fighting uh, things that are bad for the environment. Uh, bringing on ele electrification with all sorts of pushing forward like uh, electric vehicles. And really a lot of progressive policies, honestly. It's very good stuff, very impressive. It's largest herd of reindeer. They have lots of birds like puffins, whales, and orcas love swimming off the coast. In the Arctic, you can find polar bears and walruses. And now, food. Norwegian food is known for being either really nice, warm, and cozy, or straight up disgusting. They love their fish. You have some interesting fish dishes like lutefisk and rockfisk. Some other dishes include things like various types of porridge, pickled herring, kumla, Reindeer made in various ways. Meatballs and brown sauce. <laughs> Sorry, I've heard of a few of these. 
Man, Americans are just so limited on what we eat and what we're exposed to as far as fish and meats that we are just, I find a lot of this stuff really, oh, I don't want to say disgusting, but uh, I don't know. I would, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I could bring myself to eat some of these uh, sorts of things. Krumkaka, brown cheese, these Christmas dishes, and the national dish, fotokal. However, if you ask a Norwegian, they might tell you the new national dish of Norway is tacos. They <laughs> might have some right. questionable ingredients on the table for you to add, like mayonnaise or cucumbers. And I mean, come on, Mexico, even you break your own rules all the time and mix things up in your own country. So let the Norwegians have their fun. And speaking of Norwegians, have fun. Oh, and speaking of Norwegians having fun. Oh, and speaking of Norwegians <laughs> having fun. Okay, uh, I think that's a good spot to uh, leave off for now. That's about halfway. This is by Geography Now. I give that a like. I give that a big like. That was fantastic. That is like, this has did the perfect job of ex exactly what I was looking for and more. But I was looking for someone to explain to me the territory of Norway, the geography, how it's laid out. Um, and it did that and so much more. It was even talking about islands and Antarctica and how much of the ocean Norway owns and the fjords and the mountain ranges and then the food. And <laughs> this, uh, this was fantastic. This was great. I have a much, much better idea of uh, what is in Norway and where it's located, more importantly. And uh, a little bit how it's laid out. They even talked about the amazing infrastructure as far as roads and traveling. Uh, so this was very good. This was exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, very interesting. Anyway, if you found this interesting, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, uh, me reacting to Norway, Norwegian culture, stuff in Norway that I've never seen before. Uh, feel free to subscribe for more. And I believe this video in particular is going to have a part two. So stay tuned for that. And uh, until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.